Is it lunchtime? <laughs> what a walrus eat for lunch. Tuna? Is <laughs> <laughs> about right? Of course, yeah. We are back on site this morning and we're doing something to keep our nice foundation paint job from getting all splattered with mud again. That's putting this landscape fabric all around the perimeter. And normally we would do straw or hay and just spread it out. But Jamie was pretty smart about this, thinking that it's usually pretty slippery on a slope if you sprinkle straw all over like a hill. And we're still gonna be walking around and we'd probably be slipping and busting our tails. So hopefully this is gonna be less slippery and protect the paint from getting splattered with mud. I think she should gravel the whole thing. <laughs> Gravel perimeter. No, that's, no, I, that's not it, a bad idea. It's not a bad idea because, you know, you think about it. What's growing here? I don't know. Nothing. Nothing. Look out there. It's just going to be dead leaves. You boys got that thing manscaped for me? I mean, landscape? Yeah. <laughs> this is one of my least favorite tasks of the entire job is doing this blocking. It's just tedious. You're scampering around. We're having to pull up surface that we were walking around on and then put it back so just all around not a lot of fun but completely necessary so this is one piece here this is the end and we'll put our decking on here sticking out an inch it's really five and a half and then you know our decking boards will have something to land on here and butt into that perimeter band piece and that's how that's going to work we're going to add these underneath in maybe three or four spots just to give that edge a little more support but really it's just supporting you know, like a cantilevered out eight inches this piece of decking. Goes, this one goes here. That's all it's doing. Oh yeah. I'm using these number nine GRK deck screws and the number nine is slightly thinner on the shank than the number 10, which makes it nice for not splitting. And these have a, a longer like smooth section on the shank, which makes them better at drawing, but they're not as structurally good as the number 10, the Goldies that we usually use. But in this case, this is like semi-structural. It's not really like the house is gonna fall down or fly apart if this blocking isn't on with number 10s. So this section, the blocking piece is out in the middle between these two joists. So we have to do our little ladder pieces and then apply that to the top. And it needs to be wider than a two by six. It ought to be two two by sixes because our board's a two by six. That doesn't get, give any nailing surface on the edges. Working on an idea here, since these blocks have to be installed an inch and a half below the top of this so that our board on top of it flushes with this, I've tacked a block that thickness on top of my ladder piece. So hopefully I can put a screw in it and have it flush out for a shot. I can measure the other side because I don't have to like have four hands to do that. So I'm gonna tap that down till that's flush. And that, that should be it, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, wake that up. I gotta put my starter screws in. say this was your favorite thing to do? I said this is my least favorite. Case in point, I just dropped the drill, also dropped the block that Ray is trying to hand me, and I'm sitting on a piece of like scrap plywood you're with lying. my butt cheek hanging in the air. I have my feet on the 45 with my knees planted right here. <laughs> it's the worst and there's, I don't know of any better way to do it. Ray, I dropped my drill. No! <laughs> well, that sucks for you. Here's our last section of blocking needed. We're gonna have a board come straight out from the post to the wall, separating in this section of decking here and there. And the joist worked out nice for us that time. Ramel, I was just gonna let you know about the features that all, all iPhones have. It's called notes. If you hadn't checked the other side, there's a button that says notes. You have a post-it note on but it? Yes, doesn't it a post note on the back of the phone. I had to go to the vets and make sure that my cat got her nails trimmed. I see that. Fiona went... get nails clipped look, is what it says. Look, look. She got my face. Oh. What? Ah, get ah! <laughs> Ray, you're too close. No, I'm not. Dude, if he jumps, he's going to be on your face. Don't, well, don't touch him. <laughs> this is a good where, reference. This is where we go to the hospital.
Arlo's mocked up what we're getting ready to make out of copper, which is more expensive, these caps for the top end of our rafter tails to keep them from weathering. So he's got a little drip feature here so that water would drip off there instead of running down the rafter into the house because it's angled up. I think that's gonna work. I'm at the shop and I think Jamie has completely <laughs> torn this Jeep apart. I see gas tanks. I see newly painted frame parts. Seats are gone. Engine's still in there, so that's good. Holy cow. Well, we got one in it. Even though it's a engine creation. There's the $300 roll of copper. So it's nice stuff. How far is the cutter it's cut out? I think it's, I think it's, uh, Inch and a half, I believe. Inch and a half extra? I think it is. Check and see. I think you can see it there, maybe. But. got our first piece mocked up out of the real copper material. Slide that on there for me, Arlo, because it, it's kind of nice. It actually is like a friction fit, so we may not have to nail it. It may just go on there with some Lexhale. Look uh, like gold bars sitting there, don't they? <laughs> um, but I was like, Eric, don't we have to, if, we're, if there's 22 on one side, we got to go 44 because he wants them on the bottom side too. Oh. Mm. Yeah, exactly. It's so shiny. You it's guys, you throw like it to each other yeah. like you're done, like you're in uh, fish market. Seattle. Seattle. Uh, yeah. You ready? <laughs> I actually saw those guys do that in the fish market, and they're throwing some big boys. You saw it in person. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. The first guy that did that I was like, "Wow, that was a good idea. Let's do that again His every day." Like, oh. Hits him in the face, knocks him out. Yo, Jack, you throw a fish at me. What an idea! We should throw fish at each other. Yeah. Now they're swamped now every day. They're killing it. Making money hand over fin. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm impressed. Good one. Good one. I won't forget. Doing a little bit of uh, marking. Ooh, that's a little crooked. There we go. Sort of eyeballing that a little bit. That going right there. Jimmy, have you got it down and you can just see 12 degrees now? Yep, and an eighth of an inch. I can see that there. I'm just gonna mark that and doing a little sheet metal body work here with my, uh, that. Since I'm at Jamie's, I'm getting a tour of the stuff he's gotten lately. And right now I'm looking at a backpack blower. It's the size of like a motorcycle engine. <laughs> Look at that thing. This bad boy is fuel Shindua. injected. No, Shindua. it's not. Shindua, I never heard of it. Well, how'd you buy it? Well, I went to the store. I said to the mechanic guy, I said, which one would you get if you needed a big bad blower? Last bit of the tour today, giant pile of walnut boards. It is, it's about a thousand feet of walnut, two inch thick. A guy at the sawmill, an old guy said, this is the best walnut logs he ever sawed in his whole life. He saw or sawed? Sawed, 
Sawn <laughs> has seen. Sawn cut it with the What saw. about them, though? Well, they were just really big trees, just really large. He said, this tree, you got a lot of top cut on it. And top cut means the big saw blade on the bottom of the mill. Yeah. A circle mill wasn't tall enough to cut through it all the way. They have another blade that comes wow. down from the top and cuts it. And so I just thought it'd be a fool to pass it up. And yeah. so I- This I, one's super wide. Put your put your hand for- Yeah, yeah. That, one, that one's really nothing compared to some of the ones down in the bottom. Actually, oh yeah, look at that guy. Look, down here, you'll see some the shorter ones there. Some of them are about 24 inches wide. Wow, that is So uh, I gotta think of something good to make with these. Hey guys, today's video is brought to you by Cooper Lighting and their Halo Recessed Nightlight. And I'm in my stairwell where I just installed a couple of these. The nightlight, of course, is also a downlight, a recessed downlight with about a thousand lumen output, five different color temperature adjustments, so it's really adjustable, and it was really easy to install. And it can be installed on just a drywall with no can, or in my case, I'm putting these friction tabs on to go inside my existing six inch cans, and that'll just pop right in and screw into the existing light socket. These are a really great option for places like a stairwell where you might not have a receptacle to plug in a nightlight and you don't want to leave your 60 or 100 watt lights on all night keeping people awake because it's too bright. Also in bathrooms or anywhere you're going to be half asleep walking to have a nice nightlight without taking up a receptacle is great. To switch between the downlight and the nightlight mode all you have to do is flip the switch on for the downlight and then flip it off and back on and you have the nightlight. These lights also have a dim to warm feature, which is great for relaxing or taking a bath or low light for a movie. So the light gets warmer as it dims and makes it nice and cozy and relaxing. These lights would really be great for any room you need to have a low lighting option, including the kitchen, bedroom, hallway, bathroom, TV room, living room, pretty much everywhere. And they are Energy Star listed and they are wet rated so you can put them in a shower or above a tub. They also have a five year warranty. Halo's been the number one brand leader for 25 years in a row per Builder Magazine, and they've been around for 65 years, and we're gonna be using all Halo products on the modern build here. If you're interested in some of these Halo Recess Night Lights, I'd really recommend them, and there's a link down in our video description. If you click it, it'll take you right where you need to go. Thank you, Cooper Lighting, for sponsoring our video. As always, we really appreciate it. Let's get back to work. Our decking is going to be here really soon. Did you know that? You just told me so, yes. <laughs> All right, now you know. Look, all right, we only have one flat spot on this whole site, and this is it. So I'm thinking the decking goes right here. Yeah. Now, a little bit of a drag. I didn't tell anybody, but they don't have a lift on the truck. <laughs> so okay. that means we just have to offload it by hand. Okay. Uh, it won't be the worst thing ever. This was all cleaned up. We spent a whole like afternoon doing oh, this once already. Can't tell. Just really what we're doing. First thing is lifting a wheelbarrow. Uh, yeah. No stretching well, we or nothing. Some, we get some of this off. Oh, I already worked out this morning. I don't know about you. Really? Every no, morning. I did not. <laughs> I cooked a bunch of bacon and ate it. <laughs> nice. Nice. That's it. Did you pull anything? This pile of stuff here, we left it for neighbors to get stuff for kindling. And it's been here for long enough to where we've decided it's got to go. They're not coming to get it. And it's just turning into like mixed in with dirt. So it's going in the dumpster. We tried. I hear the truck somewhere in the woods with our Envision decking. So I'm going to yeah. send the drone up, see if we can find him. A lot of people will be getting lost in here because there's several routes to get in here. That are, and some are one way. Okay, he's at the neighbor's house, so he got pretty close. Okay, this could be a problem. Go, go, go. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh. Jamie's gonna get chained up to this truck he's stuck, which is not uncommon here at all, building in, in the mountains. It's like a goat trail road. It's gravel. It's way steeper than it looks on this camera. Basically do this right here. Then uh, we'll have my chain will just get stressed half as much. It's not the biggest chain in the world. Big truck. That is a big truck. Um, That's a little truck. I guess he puts him four low. Yeah, there's the problem is that tire is down in like a ditch. So it does not want to go forward.
Dodge did it. I didn't think it had it at all. After the first like three seconds of that, I was like, no. Just kept no. going. She did good. Ray's, Ray's cleaning up the. Nothing to, Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Yeah, there's one down there. Yeah, there's a big one down there. <laughs> I'm not a truck driver or anything, but I would say open up that door and just have them back up and hit the brakes. Yeah, and they just... remember the fasteners this time. <laughs> I mean, well, that's Harrison, the quickest full of doors and windows too, bud. Harrison uh, gets points for. <laughs> They're not day. ours, are they? I don't care. <laughs> I think. I mean, I think we got three. I mean, I think we'll be four. More coming. Oh yeah, more than we bargained for. <laughs> yep, let's just let it go. All right. Yep, this slides on out. Go. Arlo looking sharp today in that flannel. That's oh, your yeah. Thanksgiving wear? Yeah, he's got his, yeah, got his tucked in with the belt. Dude, I'm telling you. We've got edge boards and field boards. The field boards have this groove in it for the fastener. Uh, these are edges. Edges. Edgy Jackson. Last board, and that is a monster stack of decking. We're gonna put all that down now. <laughs> Thank you, bud. Have a good Thanksgiving. We're spacing our railing out an inch and a half here because our decking's gonna stick off here an inch. These are all in the way on this side. So. Yeah, they are. We want to leave it though for now. I think it's gonna be, be a nice. few days. Yeah, be nice, nice. to leave it. Uh, uh, that's you need to do on this side, Jay. Why? Because he can go straight in here. Oh. oh. See, it's offset. Oh. There you go. I'll hold it. You go. Oh, you're reversing. Reversing. Okay, got you another one. I'm really good at this. Yep. We're getting all this sheathing Yo, pulled up so we can get the decking going down. Yep. Also, before we forget, because we almost did forget, we got to do some blocking for our deck posts that are going to land in certain locations. Yeah, Where is that going to be? <laughs> right? Basically, every six feet, there's going to be a uh, post. structural post. But in between each one of those will be a little divider. And I don't know if those attach or whether the divider every three feet is more kind of like superficial, but just holding the, uh, the balusters. Should we block just the whole outside edge? Um, that's a lot of blocking. We better uh, consider. I could probably look online. It's actually going to be an Envision brand railing. It's okay. going to be aluminum. And uh, I can probably look it up online real fast. Is that gonna work? We're going to get going with this edge piece. And I'm going to snap a line four and a half inches in so that it sticks off an inch. Are you going to cut that board at all? Or just no, I'm going to run it long. And we'll just cut the 45 on it later. You do a little cookie down here? Yeah, what does that measure? Yeah, so I don't know what our edge pieces measure, but probably get the longest solid edge piece we got. Four and a half. You got a new chalk line, perfect. Four and a half in. Okay, you ready? Okay. That's good. Coming in HOT. We're gonna zip tape this where we can. Again, this is not a approved use of this necessarily. Um, it's supposed to be covered by siding eventually, but we think it's going to help. Yeah, I know. It's supposed to be covered by siding. Oh, the tape. Yeah. Uh, but it is going to keep water from going between the layers of the beam. At least for some period At least for of some period of time. And that's the only reason we're putting it here. Woo! <laughs> About fill a half inch. <laughs> yeah, that'll get you every time. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing worse than stepping off that with your heel. Y'all been pulling pieces here for a little while, so. These screws are for the outside piece, and the rest are gonna be hidden fasteners. So we'll get a few of them to start. It's like a T20 probably. Oh, there, here's the one in there, no? Every time it's some slightly different T20. 20. Dang it. That's mine. That's too big. Why is it yours? That's because no, it's not. It's I have not? the whole thing of them. Oh, okay. I thought you said. <laughs> <laughs> it's mine. That's how I get tools. I just, somebody hands me something, oh, I just mine. claim it. You don't have to pre drill this, I don't think, but I think it's a good idea. And I'm just going to go about an inch in. So we got solid everywhere on this one, right? Yeah. 
getting precise today, I guess. Okay, I'm just gonna let her stick past plenty extra. I'm gonna sink these just flush like that. I'm gonna space back to where we do the third row in right here so that we can do our blocking for these posts later because we don't have that figured out yet. So spacer, ah! See, that's gonna be the edge of our outside piece. That goes like that. And then we need another space. So that be there. All right, Jay, from our chalk line that we have, six and a sixteenth, and we'll snap another line. That's the outside of the third row in. Ooh, hey, Ray, keep that middle from touching till we're ready. We're gonna have like 10 chalk lines. 220, this is 221 seven eighths. So, Jay, you need to come out like three sixteenths. Keep going, keep going. Yep. We're using this hidden fastener system by Envision Decking, and our method here is to put in the clips on the outside edge of the board loosely so that we can get the next board in. And then we go back once this is installed and get, 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 hit them all tight. Otherwise, there's no way you'd slide the next one in is what we found. Dude, I just Jason Ellis to this bit. <laughs> there was a job a couple jobs ago where you broke like six of these bits within five minutes, and I was heckling you. Dude, it you. took you like ten seconds. It was literally the first one I put in with this bit. Too much power. Uh, so I would like for you to okay. tell all the viewers that it was not me; it was the bit. Well, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I'm Come gonna, on, bro. I'm gonna dial this down to sissy mode. Drill is real. And by <laughs> Can't say that. <laughs> to this mode. <laughs> Instead of okay. so. Just sticking around. Alright, we got Jason's bit here. Oh yeah. That's a better bit for sure. Does that look right, Arlo? Yeah, it should be this little one. Yep, I think we got it. Oh, there's dad. With a giant kayak. <laughs> yeah, guy, I'm pretty sure you gotta take your finger out of there before you put the screw in. <laughs> it sucked my glove finger in there. I just put it on. What? Oh, it's stuck. You see how I just, that was a brand new bit. I just got it. Okay. Did three screws. Look how twisty it is. You what see are these that? bits made of? Oh, Jamie! I guess practically already snapped. Yeah. See, all the ones that are this really light color material, they're snapping, and this kind looks like it's made of real metal. Yeah. I had a DeWalt one too that was looked the same. Yeah. Just snapped. Yo, guess who hasn't broke a bit? Mm. Also, since we're just doing a section at a time with divider boards, it feels a lot faster or less frustrating because you're not having to like crawl out there and get two people to measure each board that you have to cut and then try to break it on an inch and a half wide joist, which is a little trickier because you got to pre-drill or not install the clip all the way. Anyway, this just seems faster. I don't know if it is. I like it a lot better though. Jono, you're in a bad spot. <laughs> Yo, get your wood off my wood. Talk about being in a bad spot. It's not even recording. It's not even recording, but you're just gonna have to go around it. <laughs> We're doing it for you guys. Grab my wood. Jason is. 